Patagonia. I'm on the Perito Moreno Glacier in Patagonia. I'm struggling to get out of a moulin, a freezing watery tomb of rock hard ice. I'm escaping the moulin, but out here, freezing cold wet clothes can still kill you. And you know, if I just left myself soaking wet up here on a glacier like this, very fast. You know, the first thing that's hard is just even moving on this in boots like this on the ice. It's like going uphill on an ice rink. Look, watch this. Trying to move across a glacier without crampons is pretty impossible. Nice to shot. And that's just trying to move 20 feet. I'm going to need another plan if I'm going to make any progress across this. If you haven't got crampons and there's a glacier between you and safety, you've got to improvise. And these off, I need to try and get them over. And the aim really is for these socks to give more traction than just the rubber sole of these boots. I don't know if this is going to work, but there's only one way to find out. Okay, trying to give it a try. And that's, that's great, it's definitely grippier than just rubber soles. Who would have thought it? A simple pair of socks gives me just enough grip to keep my footing on this rock hard ice. You don't want to hang around up here, you got to keep moving. To get some speed up, I'm going to ditch my socks and use normal crampons. If I can't get over them, I just have to go around. The temperature on the glacier can plunge to minus 40 degrees. But the twists and turns of the Perito Moreno make navigation a real challenge. Sorry guys, I've led you on a bit of a duff route here. I don't want to have to retrace my steps. I need to get a move on. Although what I could do actually is just cut like a nice bollard around this and with my rope. I just abseil down this. The survival manual says go round an obstacle. Get on my way. And what I'm doing here is just cutting a groove for the rope to fit into. I have to make sure the bollard is wide enough to take my weight without splitting. If it's too thin, the rope will slice through the top like cheese wire. Just through the legs, over the head, and then I'm good to go. Under! Ease myself round. And down we go. The bollard is holding, I'm over the ice wall. As you can then pull your rope down after you. And jobs are good at. I'm crossing the wild expanse of the Patagonian steppe. And at night, the cloudless sky means temperatures plummet to minus 15 degrees. I can tell tonight is going to be cold. So really my priority is just to get some shelter from the wind. If you're going to make camp, the golden rule is do it before it gets dark. <laughs> this is about the biggest boulder around here. That's a good place for me to shelter, nicely protected from the wind. While I was out gathering a lot of that wood, one thing I did notice was a lot of animal tracks, and especially our hares. If I can make snares for my parachute lines, I've got a chance of catching some food. And all I need to do is make like a bite in one end, just a really simple overhand knot that gives you that really nice simple little loop. And then I just thread the other end through that. 
when it comes under pressure, it tightens on itself. Take one of these and just smear the scent of the cow pat all the way over my hands. And what this will do is hopefully mask my scent. You want something that's got a natural track to it that they use regularly. And you want this to be about a hand's height off the ground and about a fist width. I want to get going and see if I've got a hair. It's a bit like Christmas morning. I'm really hoping there's going to be a nice present in one of these snares. There's no luck with this one either. Although, look, you can see hair droppings nearby, which means they obviously do use this run, but just not last night. It looks like I'm not having hair for breakfast. The step is crossed with streams and glacial meltwater. The best bet is to aim down for the valleys, the fast way or the bare way. That's how to get down the scree slope. These streams carry rain and snow melt from the high step into the valleys below. That's nice. Best of all, the water is clean and pure. One of the keys of survival is to keep water close by. If you can find a stream and follow it, you've got a good chance of finding people. This is Raul. We're hunting for pumas at the moment. I rasso saki. Just looking to see if there are any tracks around here by the waterhole. Okay, he doesn't see any around here. Who he reckons if we head up for yeah? Head up there. Better chance. Pumas are a huge problem out here. Every one has a bounty on its head. When it starts raining with the wind as well. Doesn't seem to deter Raoul though. He's determined to find a puma. And it's not long before we see the first signs of puma. This is sort of damage that the pumas do to livestock. Last year, a man fishing in the nearby lake was killed by a puma. It looks like we're getting dangerously yeah, close it. to our target. The puma. Seguro. He's saying this is definitely, this is definitely a puma kill. Yeah, he said this is a typical place that, you know, puma will bring it. It's got a really good view out of all the hunting ground. Uh, it can be out of the sun, out of the wind and rain. And this is just sort of place a puma would use. He reckons, he reckons my will be a puma not far away. Raoul is definitely onto something. His knife is poised. Under the rock, we come face to face with the deadly power of the puma, a half-eaten calf. They take that and also that gash straight through puma claw down there. And then the puma will also eat all of the soft organs. Raoul won't let any part of this puma kill go to waste. He'll use the skin for saddles and bridles. Just asking if you can eat, eat this meat raw straight off the carcass. Slightly worryingly, he said yes. Gracias, Raúl. A blooming tough this one. Can't even get it down. Gone. <laughs> Raúl, quieres comer algo? No, so no, gracias. No, he doesn't want any. He's saying it's better when it's cooked. Yeah, thanks. Kuracha.